It's the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast. Brian Spath is here. Hey, we didn't do a summer movie podcast this year. We did. Uh, We're too busy. Did we do Jurassic World though, or one of them? I don't remember. I don't either. Was Ant Man this summer? Yes. Okay, I saw Ant Man. I did too. But we're not here to talk about movies. What are we here to talk about? Well, you convened this podcast, actually. So, <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, I, I did. Gonna, the Cavs. We're yeah. going to talk about the Cavs. We're going to talk about the fact that you're an Apple American now. Yes. Half. Yeah. Three quarter. No, half. Two thirds. And then make sure you're close to that mic so we don't All right, get sorry. in trouble. Sorry. Um, but uh, so, yeah, you're you're some part of an Apple American now. Yeah. I... Uh, I, I was an owner of the Nexus One, which was Google's first phone, first Android phone, and I've been on Android since then. And I Saturday, I switched over. I got a I got a success. And you've been pretty staunchly in the Google in the Google world and on their side. Not, you you never really took a position in the in the phone wars. No, it wasn't a big deal. It was just I was I was in Google's ecosystem for contacts and calendar and Gmail, obviously, and uh, all my you know docs and I, I use Google's everything, Maps, obviously. I, I use all their stuff, and uh, I'm a Mac user, but I've never gone to iPhone because you could never kind of live in Google's ecosystem and still use an iPhone really effectively. See, I um, always felt like I could. Because I'm I'm a I'm a Google person too, so mm-hmm. Gmail and all that stuff, and I've had an iPhone since the four. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm a heavy Google Calendar user. Yeah, and you're right. Google Calendar stinks on that iPhone. Or y- has. Yeah, and over the summer they finally. Um, like came out with a really good Google Calendar app because it would sync the calendar to Apple's calendar before. Yeah. But I have like like for me, I have different Google calendars for each client and all these labels and all this stuff. I have like fifteen different Google calendars that all like live in there, and that just didn't work with Apple's. What's with your the most iPhone. idiosyncratic Google Calendar? Um. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Because my wife and I share a bunch. So okay. She has hers. I have mine. She maintains the birthday and anniversary calendar. Oh. That's my most idiosyncratic <laughs> one. And it's not mine, but it's like synced to my thing. I, you know, I have one for um, I have one for things I want to read and watch. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calendar like, for what you want to read and watch. Because I, I, well, I can never seem to watch anything when it's actually on. True. But it's not like I have like a Netflix list that I check and curate. It's just my Netflix thing has like 50 things on it that I'll never watch. But so like shows I want to check out um, or like, for example, like Project Greenlight started again last week and I wanted to make sure to check it out. So I put it on the calendar and then I have it weekly and I haven't watched any of them yet. Uh, but it's it's there to remind me that <laughs> when I never find three hours or four hours or five hours to catch up to, to do that. And what else? Doctor Who just restarted. I really wanted to watch that, but I, I won't be able to do that either. But it's on the calendar. Um, and then there's a lot of books on there that week to week I just shift to the next week because I, I don't have time for that either. See, so. I, and I've, I've finally <laughs> found it liberating to like tell Jen that she can watch the whatever the new spinoff Walking Dead thing is. Right. And I'll watch whenever I happen to be there, but I'm not being precious about it. It's not right. really appointment viewing for me. Right. And so it feels a lot better. Yeah. You know, I catch what I catch and I don't catch what I don't catch. And if I really get into it, if it's crazy like uh you know, like Mad Men where I can't miss an episode, I'll go back and Right. And, yeah. I put Limitless the new Limitless T V show and the new minority port report one on there and then i immediately took them off because i'm like i'll never watch them i just won't well uh, and even uh even the is it daredevil yeah on netflix yeah i started watching that and it was okay i loved that actually i was really into like, it i might even pick it up again someday it was good i i really loved it but you know i'm a that's sure. that's right in my my area so well and apparently it didn't because it's marvel they didn't violate the code of their their backstory and history they stayed true enough to it. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think they did it really well. It, it was uh, very, very dark and grim, but also didn't lose its humor. So um, that was really good. By the way, I had a <laughs> wait. Where was I? Oh, I was at a doctor appointment the other day, and I had a uh, 
you know, the, the nurse was in there. He's a male nurse. And for whatever reason, we got to talking about uh, movies. And he was a big comic book guy. So yeah. he, he brought up that he loved Man of Steel. And it got really like contentious actually in there because <laughs> i was I hope like he wasn't gonna stick you and <laughs> take blood or anything. no no it was uh anyway but it was really funny because i was like man i this like his like for this is really offending me now like i i can't handle it and he was probably thinking man i walked into some argument <laughs> this guy's had 74 different times <laughs> right you could always tell when you walk into a conversation that somebody's already had elsewhere right right because they start spitting out mechanically they spit oh out i had all my talk yeah i had them all that's uh, so great. Which he, which he, I, I brought. He agreed with them, but said, you know, I kind of liked it anyway. Which is pretty much my stance. Yeah, I still don't think that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so so now that you're in the Apple, but I want to explain course. why I did this. Okay, and and I did it because I needed it, the the Android fragmentation finally caught up with me. It yeah. just finally because Android Pay came out. And I don't know when, I didn't know when my phone was going to get it. I had no idea. I would sit there and check the software update every day to see if it was there. It was never there. Um, and then, so then I'm, I'm going to, I, I think I called Verizon and I said, well, do any of the phones have it yet and which ones? And am I eligible for an upgrade? Because I'm, I thought I was supposed to be able to upgrade every year on the Edge program. And they're like, well, we got rid of the Edge program. It's called this now. And I'm like, well, how much just to upgrade to a new phone? Yeah. And they're like, uh, like $400. And I'm like, but I thought I was paying extra to be able to upgrade earlier. And they're like, yes, but we changed that pro. So anyway, so when Apple came with their thing where it's like, you just pay X amount per month and you can have the newest iPhone the day it comes out every single year. I'm like, okay, good. That's, I'm doing that because it's predictable yeah i don't count on it i don't have to think about it anymore and you don't have to worry about apple pulling that back right it's in their best interest to keep you in that program exactly exactly so do you turn in the old phone i don't know this program. no i'm i'm well i have a few phones on my on my account my, no, just tell me about the apple pro how does the apple program? yes work? you turn okay the apple program basically you are you are essentially buying the phone Sure. Over 20, you're, you're splitting it up into 24 payments. Let me payments. explain something to everybody listening, by the way. No matter which program you're in, you're essentially buying the phone. Yes. One way or another, yes. you're buying the phone. You're buying the phone. So, so you're, you're splitting it up. Try not into, to buy it twice. Yeah, you're splitting it up into 24 payments. And, well, I'm paying for two phones right now, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> uh, you split it up in 24 payments. And uh, after, when the new iPhone comes out, you can just go in. And you switch it out for the newest phone, and your your twenty four payments essentially start over at that point. It's kind of like if you say, "Well, you know what? I'm just going to lease a car for the rest of my life, and I'll always have a car payment." This is kind of like I'll always have a phone payment, but every year I will always have a brand new phone. Yeah. And I'm like, that's good. I don't have to like when a new Android phone comes out, and I have to be like, "Oh, can I get this? Should I get it? Is it better than my current phone?" Well, the camera is this, and the RAM is this. Yeah. And the processor is that, and the screen is this size, and you have lollipop, but you're going to get marshmallow in three months, maybe, if your carrier says it's okay and the manufacturer is okay. It's like, I just, I, I was, uh, this is all very, like, you know, first world problems, obviously. But well, and, and here's another thing that you bring up uh, with the lollipop and the marshmallow and, and between that and Apple's nomenclature for their uh, operating systems, uh -huh. what once used to be kind of cute. Just need just give me a version number. Enough, yeah, yeah, enough yeah, yeah. with the code names. I yeah. don't, don't want to download Yosemite. <laughs> I don't want to download Yosemite. Well, they, they still do that with their normal ones, but just stop it. Uh, just stop it. Give it a number. I can't Your cute names are like I can't I, get mad about that. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well what if it was like Ant Man two um you know, Arachnid. Well they do that. Oh come on. Captain America the Winter Soldier. Ugh. Captain America Civil War. I like it. Well, the, but, the cutesy little names. I just, I can't. All right. I'm okay with it. D do it behind the scenes. Do it in Cupertino <laughs> if you need a special code name. But don't don't put it on a, a, a I was going to say a PowerPoint, but Apple wouldn't do that. I like it. All right. You're wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, I, I so, and, and this is part of a larger sports topic. Yeah. You can drag me back to the topic at hand. But like when when the Browns codify the the 
dog pound and uh-huh. we bark together. Right. That's where it goes from being like this natural thing that we all love to this thing that uh, that we can package and sell. Yeah, it's contrived. It's and, and so that's the same way I feel like in the first in, at the beginning when iPhone was this new radical thing and they were or, or even Android and they had cute little code names for it. OK, fine. But you're you're installing it on 100 million phones a month. Let's stop it. It's not a cute little side project. Anymore. It is. It, it, Google. But, but this is the this is I call this generation nonsense. I love it. We're all like holding on to our, our uh, you know, a more playful sense of things. I like it. But it only works for the new things. How by so? The t- by the time Android has become mature, yeah, and iPhone has become mature, the uh-huh. cute little code names just piss me off. They do. Yeah. Uh, I thought you let go of that stuff. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I try to let most of it go. Uh, you can let this go. You can let this, especially the Android one. You're having an on Android. No, no, you're right. <laughs> you okay? I'm, I am okay. <laughs> All right. No, anyway, so let me tell you what happened. So I saw this new, I, I, I saw the iPhone upgrade program come out, and I said, that's it. That's what I want. And so I immediately, I grabbed my iPod, and I, right. I checked all the Google stuff and said, okay, can I do this on, can I, can I function how I function now on Apple? Uh, on an Apple device, and there were only a few glitches, but I found a, a, a contact syncer that would really work. And if Google would come out with a legit, and maybe Apple has a way that they're blocking this, but if Google would come out with a Google Contacts app, yeah. like that would be the best. And maybe they will, but the, the new calendar app was was going to work. And and I found a contact syncer, and I bet uh, there's an Apple terms of service that keeps that. Yeah, I think like so. Proprietary, so that you can't get around their telephone. Yeah, the one, the one. There's a few little glitches in there like that, like um. Excuse me. Excuse me. Since I'm stuck in, you know, you're in the iMessage platform. There's no like click to call on the phone in there. Um, There is. It's two clicks away though. Yeah, it's two clicks away because I used to be able to just click. Um, The maps. It used to be in contacts. If you hit the address, it would open Apple Map or Google Maps, but it opens Apple Maps. So. And Google Maps is better. Yeah, it definitely is. And plus, all my saved addresses are in there and stuff like that. So we're getting so close, though. I can feel it. I we're so close to this convergence point where, oh, yeah. where the phone is great and and the cars soon enough the the screen in your car is just going to be a dumb screen right and it's just going to it's going to be an apple tv projecting yeah. what your phone does yeah 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 because why would you buy why would you buy into a car electronics ecosystem that has no upgrades right when it could just be a dumb screen that runs whichever version of of Apple's phone map program that right. you like best. Well, that's I, I mean I'm all over when that thirty five thousand dollar Tesla comes out in in two thousand seventeen or eighteen or whatever it is. Yeah. That's because that that thing upgrades like the car gets better the well, longer. Right, you, well, you're yes, sleeping. yes, it totally does. So, um, but no, where we're headed, it, we're all we're headed. You know, it used to be everyone's oh we're headed we're gonna have like tricorders like Star Trek, you know, in the Star Trek computer. We're, pretty much there if not yeah. past it in a lot of ways but now we're we're headed now for for Jarvis from Iron Man. Well, I mean that's what we really didn't realize is that we would tire so much of audible communication like back and forth audible communication we didn't realize that we'd go to text and typing. Right. Well, I mean I think what what Star Trek maybe didn't um think about was that you know in a lot of cases you can't speak out loud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't do that like everywhere, you know, so, or you wouldn't want to necessarily. Right. Um, so, but no, we're headed for Jarvis from Iron Man. It's just a matter of which company you'll buy it from, whether it's Apple, Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. It's going to be Facebook. Or Facebook. Yeah, because they're working on AI also. With their v, uh, virtual reality. Yeah, AI. yeah. I mean, it's because it's, it's funny to like the new Siri is pretty, you, isn't pretty it slick. It's hysterical that anybody panicked over Facebook stock. <laughs> it is funny. We're like too expensive. It's I know seven dollars. I know it's they're uh, they're really doing well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. It's it, that the when I went and bought the iPhone, I, I the guy I, I forget his name. It was either Adrian or Aubrey or 
something like is that. Is this a Verizon employee or an Apple no, employee? No, I went, you can only do the upgrade at the Apple store. Okay. That's like, because I called Verizon the day, because Verizon came out the day on the Friday the iPhone came out. They came up with their yearly upgrade program okay. that was less than the Apple cost by about 10 bucks. So I called and I said, look, I want to do this. You know, what's the deal with the two phones I want to upgrade? And they're like, well, you know, it'll cost $400 for this one and $200. And I'm like, well, look, you already like switched me up on all this other stuff. Can't you, isn't there some grace period? Isn't there some like, not grace period, but isn't there some like, you know, charity like out of the deal considering I'm telling you right now, I'm going to Apple to get them direct from them. And they're like, no, not really. But I realized like they're really just in it for the data contract. That's what they, they don't really care about the cost of the phones. So, right. um, so yeah, I'm kind of eating it on one of these phones, but that, that's it for about a year, but that's, that's okay. It's worth it to me. So, but anyway, I went to, so I went to the Apple store and the guy comes out and he, he gave me a hug at the, I, I had an appointment for 11 AM and I, he came out, he gave me a hug. He's like, let's go, man. Come on. He was like a young guy. And I'm like, all right, let's go. I was with this guy for an hour and 15 minutes uh-huh. to get two phones. Okay. And I, 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 this is a transaction that could have taken 10 minutes, but I don't know. We were talking about everything from, from he, just technology to like, I told him about when I lived in LA. He told me about when he lived in Charlotte and I'm like, are you getting in trouble for like spending this, this much time with me? He's like, no, man, they, they want us to. It's like, it's part of the service. And, I was like, oh, that's really nice. So it really does kind of create a switching cost in your mind. Mm-hmm. Like you, you don't really want to leave that. Yeah. That ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. Like I like. So anyway, it was a great experience. Um, and it's just too hard to pull off for Android. I mean, we've seen. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Microsoft store in mm-hmm. uh, Beachwood Place? Yeah. They're nice enough. They yeah. try hard, but it's it's, it's not it's, the same. It's too divergent. Yeah. You don't have the. Yeah. No, you Apple's great. They keep it simple. They're like, here are our products. Like, this is it. The only, the only thing with this phone, and the other thing I, I've, I've wanted to like go to iPhone because like artistically, like it is a better camera mm-hmm. and it, and every, the filmmaking apps for it and the photography apps for it are just better. And like the lenses, the snap on lenses they make for it are better. And, but it's a, this Google thing has always held me up. So I'm really happy with what this thing is now and what I've got. I just wish, I wish the screen was a little bit bigger, but the plus was too big. I'm thinking, I'm hoping with next year that they, they have three size screens, like one in that middle area that's actually like five you inches. Got the, you got the bigger one, iPhone, right? Uh, I got the, it's the iPhone 6S. It's not, oh, you didn't, it's get the not 6S the 6. Plus. No, I did not get the okay. plus. The plus is just huge. It's the giant. Yeah. I can't deal with it. Yeah. It, it's You've just, got, I, I've got small hands and I, I still, I, so I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I just, it was just too big. Um, so I'm hoping there's a middle one next year, which yeah, maybe it's almost do. as big as the iPad mini. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, so. it's giant. So anyway, so that, that's my big thing. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the choice and, uh, I don't know. I like it so far. That's it's just kind of crazy because you know I've been a Google guy. You've been a Google guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're you've not, you're not really opposed to change. No, I'll try new things, and I'm not anti. I, I wasn't. I'm not anti Google. I think no, because I got iPad and I iPod touches. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I it's it was merely like a. It was just a, a functionality thing. I I still think a lot of the Android phones are great, and I think Android's great. Well, I'm this, fine with and it. I've talked about it on the podcast before, and probably you and I've talked about it before. I stopped doing the the brand wars. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it was it was Xbox and PlayStation, it was XM and Sirius. The I last, can, the last, I can, have, I can have both, or they're going to merge, and yeah. they're not going to fight the war. Yeah, the last brand where I was I was actively involved in was uh, Nintendo sixty four and or was it Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis? Yeah, Super one Nintendo of the two. And Sega Genesis. Yeah, that was a big one because I had Sega and my brother was a Nintendo guy, so it was it was right in the house. Yo, that's and crazy. Then my poor little sister picked up a Turbo Graphics sixteen. It was so sad. <laughs> I can't believe you had that many in your house. Like we we had to choose as a household to be Super Nintendo family. No, we we had war right 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 through the middle of the upstairs. <laughs> and I'm I'm sure my parents chose it because it seemed more family friendly. Because you had F Zero instead of like, uh, um, oh, what was the Sega Genesis one? Uh, Golden Axe. Yeah, I did all the all the Genesis ones. I mean, I, it was hard. Even in the, the moment, I knew I was losing because it was like you know it was like Super Mario, Mario Brothers versus like Alex Kidd and Miracle World. It, but it was I don't just, know how many people remember. The sports games were better on Genesis by a long shot. Were they? Yeah. The 
the the the hockey game was the one that was really great. NHL ninety four. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and the basketball game was good too. So there was something different about the engine or how it mm-hmm. worked on the SNES. Well, it was, the 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 Sega was more powerful. Yeah, it was. There's that no was doubt even about before it. Before the X thirty two X. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the Sega CD. You know, we we did switch. I remember the day we we went and we traded in the Super Nintendo mm-hmm. for the Genesis and the Sega CD. Oh, really? And that was like the first of a long line of mistake <laughs> systems we bought. <laughs> That's where your family went. Your like family just fell off a cliff. Remember Sewer Shark and Night Trap? No, I was out by that point. Off, awful, awful games. Sorry. It's okay. Um. Anyway, yeah. so the point is we're headed, we are headed for our Iron Man personal assistant, our Jarvis. It's, and they're all going to work well. It's not going to be named Siri. I hate to tell everybody. And it's going to be, I, hopefully it'll be named whatever you want to name it. Yeah. And it'll have my, my Siri. I use the male Australian voice with it. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. 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 You can get, uh, either male or female Australian, male or female, uh, British or male or female American. So that's nuts. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the other thing that I was going to bring up is if it's not Jarvis, it'll be that. What was the movie? Her. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. That's the same thing. You'll get Jarvis or you'll get her or you'll get whatever Microsoft's is called. Some of our <laughs> children, and I'm using this mm-hmm. universally, some of our children will choose not to have real relationships. And I'm telling you this not to depress you. It's not wrong. It's just going to be different. <laughs> you're like, I'm, you're like, you got real quiet and serious. You're like, I was in the future yesterday and I'm telling you what I saw. <laughs> but it's so true. You know, it is. you know, we're, it's just not right to have a relationship with, with a, a, a batch of ones. Well, and zeros. You know, it's entirely likely if you want to speak about the near future that neither of your boys will ever have driver's licenses. Yes. Because they are, we are the most dangerous creatures behind the wheel and we should not be driving under any circumstances. You know, what's really funny. They're going to, they're going to outlaw driving in 98% of the world. And the United States is going to hold on clinging. <laughs> you know, I, I like to grip my wheel. I don't care I how know. many people die. It's just the cost of doing business. <laughs> I you hope know, not. It's like such an I don't, you know, thing. I, I think it's going to, uh, I read something that said that the, uh, first of all, the technology is really close. It really is. And yeah. um, I, they, somebody said that the Japan Olympics, which I think are – are they in Tokyo? 2020? I, There's I, one. It's in a Japanese city in, I think, 2020. And that they are setting up to have all autonomous vehicles for transport for that Olympics. And that that will be the big breaking point because the world will see it work. Tokyo 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's already there are so already these cars that can parallel park themselves. It's gonna come. It's gonna slide in in these subtle ways, and then it will. It, that last step will be between that and the ability to not actually have to physically be in a space, which is because you need two things. You need the cars that drive themselves, and number two, you need the ability to not actually have to be physically in attendance someplace Mm -hmm. for a bad weather city like cleveland Mm -hmm. but those are the two things and you combine them Mm -hmm. you might it's uh it's going to change the dynamics of everything oh yeah it's going to be amazing i mean it's just like we're we're headed we're headed for changes in the next 15 20 years like it's 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 things and and that will lead to things that we can't even think of we need to start the futurist podcast because i'm sure there are a lot there's a ton of them but yeah there's a lot but it could be like a a, fascinating the non-scientific futurist podcast like we're because we're not scientists we're not we're yes the layman's yeah like the hey we we just kind of know about this stuff in a general way from a sci-fi movie angle (laughs) yes (laughs) you know we we know a little bit about tesla but not enough to really tell you right like he was a guy man he was really smart i meant the company (laughs) oh yeah musk but yeah that's fine um no, it's uh, autonomous, like self-driving cars. Like the thing is, like I'm firmly in the camp on them that like everyone's like, oh, well, you have to have an emergency takeover button. You need to have, no, it needs to be all in where we actually, there's no steering wheel. There is no ability for us to drive at all other than to hit a button that says stop. 
like the emergency yeah. stop. But no, think about it. We're terrible drivers as it is. Okay, your like, car will be better enabled to yes get out of your garage than you. Yes, we are we are bad drivers. We're distracted. We're we're thinking about other things. We're, so suddenly we are supposed to this emergency takeover. So we've been sitting in the car for 20 minutes, not driving. And suddenly we're going to be better than the machine yeah. out of nowhere. Like when we haven't been I mean, thinking about it for 20 minutes, like, no. Well, and, and so we haven't been thinking about it for 20 minutes and then you're going to string together 27 days where you haven't touched the wheel. Exactly. And then you're going to string together three months. And then all of a sudden after three months of not driving at all, it's not going to be second nature. Right. You're, you're not, not going to hop better. into an emergency situation and be like, eh! Yeah, all right. I saved us. Like, it's going to ruin movie industries. Oh, I know. It's going to be incredible. It's, it's going to change them. It won't ruin well, it'll be like, you know, it's kind of like... Um, See, it's going to be the positive futurist view. Like, you're going to get used to it. Don't panic. We always get used to things. Yeah. Because we do. I know. But uh, think about the world before the iPhone. Yeah. I, I mean, that was only what... That came out, what, 2007? It was eight years ago. Yeah. I mean, the world has completely changed since then because of those things. And all the people who say it's worse, it's not really. It's just no, different. It's just different. The same people, you know, ra oh, radio. This radio thing is terrible. We should be talking to each other. I can't. I can't believe they took away my rock station. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a Everything's gonna be fine. It's okay. It's we're we're headed for utopia. That's what people got to realize. We just got we got to get over the hump. We need a hundred years. We got to get through the next hundred years. That's that's why people like. Uh, you know, anyone who's who's talking about climate change, anyone who's pro technology, anybody who is like, hey, I want to talk about where we're going to be 50 years from now. That's who I'm going to vote for. You know? Yeah. Thank you. So let's talk about sports. Uh, OK, let's talk about sports because I love talking about the Browns to you because you're not okay. a Browns guy. Right. So the Browns are all over TMZ today. <laughs> they are. Joe. T yeah. <laughs> three, three. This is even better. I get to break news to you. Okay, I'm excited. So, three anonymous starters talked to TMZ uh -huh. and said that it's bullshit that Johnny Manziel's not playing, that I play better when he's on the field. I can't believe he's on the bench. Okay. Three starters. All right. Said that. That's number one. All right. You have to listen to all of it before you react. All right. Number two, Rizzo spent the whole morning eating, reading an email. From Joe Thomas's agent, who is pissed off that Rizzo said something and then said that Joe Thomas is done with that station. They can't get near him anymore. Okay. Who is Joe? He's a lineman? Yeah. <laughs> he's the, the, the Hall of Fame left tackle. How, uh, he's how, going to be in the Hall of Fame. Really? For sure. How long has he been on the team? Since he was drafted in 2007. Oh, really? And he's really good, huh? Yeah. He, his first year was the year the Browns went 10 and 6 with Derek Anderson. Is there, is there, a, and I'll let you finish. I'm sorry, but is there a, um, that, that, like, that doesn't happen in basketball that much. We're like somebody who has never been on a good team, mm -hmm. like, goes to the Hall of Fame. Um, Maybe Mitch Richmond. Did he get in? What about, uh, I mean, Allen Iverson, number one championship? Yeah, but he went to the finals, though. I mean, he was, they, they were, he was in the playoffs a ton. I mean, Joe Thomas has literally never been on a good team ever. Yeah, but basketball is also a, a five man, ten man. No, oh, no, it's not an exact comparison. Yeah. I was just, but does that happen a lot in football? We're like, well, I think the nearest comparison to the NBA would be a quarterback. You're never going to have a quarterback make the Hall of Fame unless he made the playoffs. But a lineman, okay, ah, yeah, okay, absolutely. all right, all right, because he can make Pro Bowls. Okay, how many? How many has Joe Thomas made? All of them. Oh, really? He's not missed one in his career. No, I, I didn't yeah. realize. That. I've never heard of him. I mean, I think I've heard of him. Maybe I mean, I've either, heard of, either way. I've probably heard of a lot of Joe Thomases, like probably. you know, over the years. Yeah. Okay. What was the third thing? The, no, the, I think that was it. I had. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the third thing was. This, That's enough. The this, TMZ <laughs> thing. The three. Like, and so some people. Are, well, you know, it's TMZ. They're, mm -hmm. they're they like to pile on, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, that's true. But you can only pile on if there's a pile to begin with. Right. And. It, it's pretty simple to see that. Oh, and the, you know, of course, their GM is still suspended. Okay, um, that's number three. That's always number three hanging out there. And, and do we feel like when he comes back that that all this will be fixed? No, no. <laughs> is no. it his? Is it his, his subtle hand and voice in the room? 
<laughs> no, but but like I used to be somebody who would look for ways to try and say that it's not dysfunctional or that the, it's not broken. And yeah, maybe, maybe maybe it's not as bad as we think. No, it's it's pretty. Mu- I mean, yeah, it's, it's plain to see. the The truth is pretty simple and obvious. The 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 thing is is like, would this ever happen in New England? No, no. They dealt they dealt with their star quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback, potentially being suspended for four games all season, and they didn't deal with this kind of back channel right like, controversy. No, it's 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 the culture of you know they talk about bad culture. That's what it is. It's a bad. It's just a bad franchise up there. It's a bad vibes all over the place. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't know. Maybe. You know, Dan Gilbert as team owner, I think has has really learned his place. Just spend the money and shut up. You know, except for those two times a year, you're supposed to like take the podium, and otherwise, just keep your hands out of things. Like nobody, although he gets on Twitter and says stupid things, doesn't he? Not a ton anymore. Okay, it's, it's less frequent. Okay, um, <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I I don't. What was your question? <laughs> I, just, I, always, I always wonder what your reaction is going to be because you're not a, you're not like a brown. Supporter. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, they. I don't care because they don't win. So I, I have no like. I, I was interested in the first two games, and I was actually interested in this last weekend's game too. I watched a little bit of it, but they're one and two, and it seems like they suck. So I, I'm, I just they're gone. Until next year, for me, pretty much. Yeah. I guess if they win this weekend, maybe they're two and two, so I'd be somewhat interested. But and, f- and for me, I've realized that the team is not what I'm attracted to. It's the ritual. It's mm-hmm. the, it's the other fans. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing that the NFL has going for it that nobody ever talks. People want to talk about fantasy and they want to talk about this. It's the ritual. Yeah. yeah. So it's just enough to that it's a ritual. It's scarce. The games are scarce. Sixteen yeah. of them a year. Yeah. And no, and there's something cool when you like, you know, you ever go to a grocery store on a Sunday afternoon? Like it's empty. Yeah. You know, when normally it wouldn't be. And there's, there's so there's something cool that knowing that you, there's a whole, whole bunch of other people watching the same thing you are yeah. and feeling the same way. And, and yeah, it's, I, I mean, when, when I was growing up, we used to have these, my parents called them Browns parties. My mom and dad would decorate the whole family room and like with Brown stuff. And we'd always make the same food and we'd have, we'd all watch the Browns game. I don't know. It was cool, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that would happen today because. Well, that, and that was the one thing I was listening to the, uh, the A to Z podcast mm-hmm. and they were saying, you know, and that's the one thing and they're joking, but they say, and, and you guys still buy tickets. Yeah. And it's like, I get that. Um, I not only buy tickets, we upgraded our tickets this year because we had two in one location and two in another location. Mm-hmm. And so we, we upgraded. We put all four together because mm-hmm. I was like, if we're all going to go, at yeah. least, you know, when my sister and my dad go and my brother and I go, mm-hmm. we're all going to see each other now. Like, we're going to hang out together. I like to think that, that you and Jen go and then Ben and Will go sit by themselves and the other two. Ben, and that's, that's how and then, it was. <laughs> Well, now, now it wouldn't have to happen. Right. We see, sit together. the boys are going to be safe now. That would have been great when they were teenagers, <laughs> right? Right. But um, it's be, but that's, that, it's, it's they'll, they'll, they'll never the, along with not having driver's licenses. They'll also never go to a Browns game because fifteen years from now we're not going to have football probably. So they they, they will, but it's going to be in what amounts to a, a twelve thousand person TV studio. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Just yeah. enough fans to make enough noise, yeah, so that they can strategically place the cameras in the perfect spots, yeah, and then. Yeah, we're all going to be watching it on VR headsets, and we're going to be plopped in the middle of the field, right? Or actually, we're going to be wherever we want, right? We'll be in Hovering one of their helmets over the line if right. that's where we want to be. You'll be in. You'll be in the helmet, or we could be in the ball. Yeah, that would be cool. We could fly towards the receiver. Yes, or we could be watching uh, Cavs highlights. Either that, or they're not going to actually be cameras. There will be sensors on everything, and it will be a computer regeneration that's even more beautiful. Than I know there will be sensors on everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is going in lots. That's of an, it's going to be the name of our pod, of our tech of our futures podcast. It's going to be called "Sensors on Everything." <laughs> sensors on everything. The future through the eyes of layman. It will be. Yes. Yes. I like it. Um. So anyway. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. No, last but not least, <laughs> last the, the Cavs email newsletter is coming back. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Um, I think I'm going to write one after we That's get off here. That's a hell of a commitment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to do it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Um, no, you know, I was going to write one this summer at the 
the conclusion of free agency, but free agency never ended because Thompson hasn't signed yet. So, yeah. um, how pissed do you think he is at his agent that he's not signed? Because he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who loves his public posturing. Yeah, I I don't know. I I kind of feel like I kind of feel like they all know something's going to work out, and it's just like. Kind of like if we were negotiating something here and we were kind of playfully going, like, you're going to break first. No, you are. You know, and we're like, we both know eventually we're going to meet in the middle somewhere. And it's just like a matter of holding on for those last few dollars because he's not going anywhere. I mean, no, but at some point, you know, I think if you're Tristan Thompson, you have to look at yourself and say, what am I? Am I? He's projecting that 80 million is not good enough for me. This is mm-hmm. not who I am because mm-hmm. I don't think that's who he is. Yeah, I don't. I Yeah, he's Canadian. So he's humble and kind. Um, and it's eighty million dollars. Yeah, like, that. And, and I think you know he strikes me as not a dumb guy either. Yeah, and and I think he has to know that there, unless he re- unless there is some part of him that really hardcore wants to go play in Toronto because he wants to go home. Yeah, um, he has to know this is the best place for him, and that being a twenty million a year guy on a forty win team is not going to be a good enjoyable time for him right. it's much better to be a 16 million guy on a on, as, a, on as a team in the Swisher. finals every year yeah exactly or yeah. any of these guys who and that's the, and joe that's johnson the, i mean and it's a story that we don't dwell on for mm-hmm. years and years and years but we've seen this enough over the over the years in different sports where mm-hmm. a guy like he trusts his agent trusting an agent mm-hmm. and then he's like i can't i i wish i just fired the agent yeah you know? The thing, I mean, all, the thing is, being who his agent is, being I, and this obviously, I'm just like making things up. But the, his agent is LeBron's friend, and LeBron's it's, I, it's just impossible for me to believe that these guys have not had conversations about this. Where it's right. like, you know, it's just but there's I, no way they haven't talked about it. But I don't think anybody expected to drag out this far. Right? No. But I, I think I think so. I, look, I, the way I'm looking at it is, he will be playing here this year, no right. matter what. Yep. So I'm not really worried about it either way. I don't. I don't. I, I'm not. I don't particularly care how much money Tristan Thompson I makes. Either. I don't care how much money Dan Gilbert spends. Nope. Um, if there was anything I cared about, it would be like, you know, okay, what is, what's the long term cap thing, and how good, how long can this team be good for? But even that, we're so far over the cap anyway. And this team, the main pieces are there, so I just there's nothing to get upset about with this or to even care about. He's gonna play. He, there's no way he's sitting out this year. No. So no, that's true. Whatever you know. Either he plays for eight. Or he's signed for eighty plus. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that. And then, great. I mean, okay, if he's an unrestricted free agent next summer, he is. I, that has no bearing everybody, on this everybody season. Nationally, was worried about Kevin Love leaving. leaving right, and exactly. He had more opportunity. I know. Did you see his hair? I did. It's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> I wish I could have that. <laughs> you, can. you can. I can't. No, my hair doesn't do that. It's it's it just goes. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he just has it styled a lot. My hair just gets bigger and bigger. It doesn't seem to get long, flowing like curly locks. That's funny. We should we should both grow out our hair because mine just gets bigger and bigger too. Yeah, I've done it before, and all all I can the only thing I can do to get it close to what Kevin Love has is to wear a hat so that the curls like kind of come yeah pop out. But then you're wearing a hat, so well, that's the perfect place to end. You think so? I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah, my hat. I want a hat with sensors in it. It'll tell me the moisture of my hair at all times. Well, I'm sure someday the head and shoulders will have a version of that hat. It will. I'll get my. I'll get my. I will. I will just say into the air. Um, you know, Franklin, get me uh, a car here in three minutes, and um, I'm going to need you to tell me the moisture level of my hair before it I get also in the car. Be interesting to start predicting. You know, which of the companies would be the winners and which one would be the next Kodak. Right. There's, there's a whole, there's a whole, well, the oil, the oil companies are going to be in trouble <laughs> if they don't shift. I'm going to tell everybody a secret here. Oh, you, you were there yesterday. That's right. Voice. <laughs> you don't realize that Tesla's don't need oil changes. These people don't realize that they don't No. No, I mean, people don't realize that. No, people don't realize it. People don't realize how easy it is to drive a Tesla, how quiet it is. You know it has a frunk? Yes. Yes. It has a trunk in the front. It's called a frunk. That's the actual name of it. I love Elon Musk and Tesla because he names things like I would because he like grew up on comic books. He names things like the Dragon Capture Capsule 4. <laughs> 
so he does things that make sense. Did you see that the new space capsule they're making? No. That SpaceX is making, which is his other company. You know this. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it looks it looks like something out of like Star Trek, like hardcore Star, like hardcore science fiction. It's like, yeah, why doesn't this stuff look like this? Why doesn't it look cool? You know. When uh, his his big thing was building rockets that weren't one and done, right? Were reusable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're crazy. They said. <laughs> right. Why? You, nobody ever asked why. You know. Yeah. It's just. No, I like I you you read the book. I know yeah. I know. So um yeah, but I like the story in there where like they they had some like circuit board or piece they needed for one of the rockets and it, it cost something like, you know, five hundred thousand dollars and he's like, We need that to cost five grand and the guy's like you know, like what? And he's like, Just figure it out. <laughs> or you're or you're fired. Yeah, you're fired. And they did. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, he he's got one of those brains, man. He's just but now people are working on that hyperloop. I'm so excited about everything, <laughs> In- including Android silly names for their uh, operating system. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always fun to talk to you on the podcast, and uh, Thank we you. should do it more frequently. No, yeah, yeah. it's not my fault. <laughs> I mean, you're the one who's like, you're always going after media people. All right, everybody. Until next time, grow your audience. <laughs> it's the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Waiting for next year.